Jesus has resurrected from the dead. And he does not immediately go to heaven. He doesn't immediately ascend. Okay? In his resurrected body, this Jesus, okay? He, in his resurrected body, he takes his, his 11 disciples into a mountain. And he has this, this class. He does this seminar for 40 days. Man, I wish I had the notes. I wish I had the, I wish I had the curriculum. But the Bible does give us a hint as to what he taught them for 40 days. And he taught them things pertaining to the kingdom. That was the name of the class. It's the longest class, most in-depth class that Jesus ever taught. Now, he peppered it all throughout. He taught, the, he, he taught them 127 lessons in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 50 lessons, if you throw out the similar ones and the repeat lessons, 50 lessons Jesus taught his disciples. And 88 times in those lessons, he, call, he calls them to remembrance of the kingdom. In fact, he never told anyone, repent of your sins. I'm sorry, it's not there. He said, repent for the kingdom. Right. See, we focus on the sin part because we got to get them out of heaven. Listen, the gospel is not the, I'm sorry. I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you right now that we need to understand the Bible said they went everywhere preaching the gospel of the kingdom. gospel of the kingdom. We think the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Acts 2.38, now there is another word there for gospel, and it is good news, but the gospel is the gospel of the kingdom, that the kingdom of God has come to earth. That is... We need an absolute revolution of understanding this. Because when we make Acts 2.38 our message, and it is part of our message. Are you hearing me? But Acts 2.38 was not what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Okay? It was the answer to a question, what must we do? You got to get them to the point of what must we do? So what did he preach? Are you ready to hear what he preached? I guarantee you what he preached. He said there was a God who, who, who created man, and God created man, and man fell. And by his prophet, and who you call fathers, uh, his prophets and his men declared that he would come to redeem mankind. And through the ages, the word came, and they didn't even know it. And neither did you when he showed up. He, God, became a man. He raised your dead and healed your sick. He touched your children and taught the things of the kingdom of God. And you hated him and railed upon him because you did not like his doctrine nor did you recognize who he was but I'm here to tell you you killed him but don't feel bad because the prophet said you were going to do that and guess what you put him in a grave but he rose again on the third day and today what you're seeing is his indwelling life inside of us what you hear and what you're seeing is Jesus and he is now he is now Lord and God and when they heard this eternal purpose, <laughs> when they heard about the kingdom of God, is that what Philip preached to the Samaritans? And he preached unto them Jesus and the kingdom. Isn't that amazing? And when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said, men and brethren, what must we do? Then Peter said unto them, then, I'm telling you right now, this indwelling life, when you, when you meet someone and you begin to work in their life, that, that spirit of God ministering through you is going to pull with all the right strings to bring them where they need to be. Yes. And if we put the message in a box, you know what I heard someone say at one time? If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh. Are you hearing me? If all you have is Acts 238, and you're going to hit everybody with it. Do they all need to hear it? Yes. But it's more than you better get baptized or you're going to hell. That ain't in the book. That's not written as an approach for the church to minister to the lost. It's not there. Well, you better get baptized or you're going straight to hell. No, that might be true that you accept a man be born again of the water of the Spirit. He cannot get into the 
It's about going into the, not about getting out of. We want to preach hell to everybody. Because somehow when we preach hell, we become better than everyone else. Because I'm not going there. And so we operate. You know what the Bible calls that? The ministry of condemnation. That's not what we've been given. We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Hey, man, Jesus loves you. He's going to work in your situation. He died for you on Calvary. Preach what Peter preached. It works. It works. Man has fallen. Everyone's born with their back to God and their face to the world. Nobody's born right. But God has come and he's made a way for things to be different. And he said you don't any longer have to be under the bondage of the law of sin and death, but of the law of spirit and life. He's going to work in your life. He's going to minister. And guess what? There's a purpose for you. There's a purpose in his kingdom. There's a purpose for your family. He's, I've seen him work. I've seen, and you begin to minister Christ to them. And they preached Christ to them. What does that mean? It doesn't mean they just said, God is coming as a man. His name is Jesus. And there's only one God. Bless God. Deuteronomy 6, 4 and Isaiah 9, 6 and John 3, 5. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now you need to get baptized in his name. That's what you need. Where is the, where is the wedding of the appetite for that? Oh, Our message is a person. His name is Jesus. Yes. He operates by love and right. peace and kindness and right. meekness and gentleness. Yes. Are, are you hearing me right now? 